Hello, my name is John Klingen. I'm a principal product manager on the Glassbury server and Java EE product management team. This screencast is going to cover what's new in Glassbury server 3.1.2. Generally speaking, dot, dot releases are reserved for quality improvements, you know, bug fixes, or for um, platform updates such as new, new versions of browsers or new operating systems. Uh, We've received a lot of customer feedback and community feedback about some features they wanted in uh, Glassfish Server, so we're actually able to accommodate quite a few of those. The first of those is around improved clustering. So Glassfish Server enables users to manage instances uh, that belong to clusters or that could be standalone instances. They could either do that manually using config nodes or they could use secure shell technology uh, to centrally manage remote instances and that essentially means installing Glassfish, creating an, an instance, starting an instance, stopping an instance, and uh, removing an instance. And even remo removing a, glass, a remote Glassfish server install. So you had basically lifecycle control over Glassfish and in instances using SSH. And this is a natural fit for Unix and Linux users, you know, the SSH technology but it's not quite as, as um, a natural fit for Windows where you have to install SIGWIN or the MKS toolkit for uh, to be able to run an SSH server. DCOM is much more natural for Windows administrators so we now support the concept of DCOM nodes. So whatever you could do with SSH you can now do with DCOM in terms of managing the life cycle of remote Glassfish server installations and instances. We've also added support for non-multicast clustering. In some environments, multicast is, is disabled, and this includes IT departments that might consider uh, multicast a security risk, or in public clouds. So we've added support for non-multicast non clustering, where you specify the IP address and port of one of the hosts of a cluster, and uh, the other instances then know where to go to find out um, where other instances are, so it essentially becomes the, the directory. Multicast in Glassfish is only used to uh, monitor the status of the cluster, so which instances have joined, uh, have uh, uh, left the cluster either intentionally or, or failed. So now that responsibility is, is essentially being managed uh, through host-to-host -host communications versus multicast. We've also made quite a few improvements to the administration console. So first, especially on uh, Windows and Mac, you'll notice the startup time of the console is, is improved. And we've also added the option to do post-startup initialization of the administration console. So when you start Glassfish, after the core application server starts, you have the option to specify that the administration console is to automatically be initialized as well. So the first time you point to the administration console, instead of it lazy loading, which is the default, um, it'll now um, basically be automatically or already loaded. So this is a, a nice usability feature. We've also improved the command line and console parity. So whatever you can do in the command line, about 95% of that you could do via the administration console and now it's it's near uh, equal parity so you know like 99% of what you can do th through the command line you can now do through the administration console and we've also done you know listened to community and customer feedback um, around usability so for example we've reintroduced the HTTP listener page to configure HTTP listeners this was something we had in Glassfish Server 2 that we removed in, in Glassfish Server 3 that we've now re-added due to customer feedback so some examples of where we've kind of closed the feature parity gap between the console and the command line. The first is application scoped resources, which you can see here. You can now view uh, application scoped resources in the console. Load balancer configuration. This was something that uh, was available in Glassfish Server 2 that you could do through the console and just simply due to, to not enough uh, uh, engineering cycles based on the timeline we wanted. We, uh, this feature was not available in the console with Glassfish Server 3.1. It was available, available via the command line, but not the uh, 
console. So we've re-added this with the uh, Glass Fish Server 3.1. Now notice uh, there's an asterisk here. Uh, this is a feature that's only available in Oracle Glass Fish Server because the load balancer plugin, which plugs into the popular web servers, is only available with Oracle Glass Fish Server. You can use the uh, mod JK and uh, mod proxy AJP uh, open source load balancers, but we don't have integrated uh, configuration uh, with the administration console for those. We've also added the ability to automatically set up SSH and install nodes via the command sorry via the console. This was a feature that was available via the command line. you can see them in, in red text install node and set up SSH. We now have uh, the ability to execute these commands via the console. So now you can install Glassfish remotely using the console so that you can ag again manage uh, instances and set up, setting up SSH which can be uh, a little bit difficult for those new to SSH. It's just kind of something uh, that can be difficult to do with SSH itself. Uh, we had a command line tool uh, or option with as admin set up SSH that would make that a lot easier and that's now something that you can do uh, via the uh, console as well. We've added the ability to configure JMS clusters through the administration console. We've consolidated uh, basically um, all of our monitoring capabilities into the monitoring tab, so now, or the monitoring tree node. So if you go to the navigation tree, you now select monitoring data, and anything that Glassfish server can, can monitor, you can now get to through this tab. Uh, that's mainly a, a usability, ease of use uh, feature. We've added Oracle Toplink support. So Oracle Glassfish customers have always been entitled to use Oracle Toplink. Now we've simply uh, embedded um, more of the Toplink features directly into Oracle Glassfish server itself, so it doesn't have to be downloaded separately. Uh, so the Oracle Toplink grid uh, enables uh, a high-performance second-level cache and the ability to uh, query redirect GPA queries directly against the cache instead of the database. And obviously both of these features are intended to reduce the load on the database and redirect that load to uh, a coherence uh, grid. And note that coherence is licensed separately from Glassfish server, but the integrated feature, you know, the feature that integrate the two is, is built into Glassfish server. And if you're interested in um, basically uh, web services that need to in directly interact with GPA in the database, we now have added support for Eclipse Link Moxie and DBWS. There's some links there. Go ahead and check those out. And Moxie also ships with a JAXB implementation, so you can choose to use that if you'd like. Uh, we've also updated our support for uh, Eclipse Link to the latest version of Eclipse Link. 2.3.2 and I should mention that this version of Eclipse Link actually includes multi-tenancy support so go ahead and take a look at the URL you see there if you're interested in that. Glassfish Server is now secure by default so if you're using the the graphical installer it'll always prompt you for an admin password you can basically just press enter which means no password but um, it does prompt you and you now have the option to change the admin password while the domain administration server is down. This is more uh, secure so that you know you download Glassfish, you unzip it, and you can immediately change the password without having to first start the DAS, uh, which traditionally had been uh, insecure uh, by default. And uh, the zip bundle now requires an admin password. This is an Oracle Glassfish server feature so uh, that when you download the zip file and you unzip Glassfish and you want to start the administration server, the, the DAS, uh, basically it'll say first you have to run uh, change admin password. And uh, this is not a feature of the uh, open source bundles and that's basically because we wanted to make the open source bundles uh, uh, you know, one step uh, quicker to um, starting development whereas Oracle Glassfish server is, is really targeted toward production environments and uh, enable secure admin which is uh, a feature that basically makes makes the communication between the DAS and remote ins instances more secure uh, for example by encrypting communication between the two uh, in the past you could have secure administration without having an administrator password 
Now, if you enable secure admin, it says, well, you first have to set an ad administrator password, right? So now secure admin basically means it really has to be secure uh, by also having a, a, a secure admin password. We've added some additional improvements. So we can now do transaction recovery using a database, whereas in the past you'd have to use a, sh a shared file system to really uh, get full transaction uh, re recovery. Uh, now instead of using a shared file system such as NFS, you could use uh, a database. We also ship Glassfish samples uh, really around the embedded API um, as a part of the NetBean 7.1.1 update center. So as a part of this um, Glassfish server release, NetBeans is also releasing NetBeans 7.1.1 uh, and that will bundle Glassfish server 3.1.2. So definitely if you're interested in 3.1.2, download NetBeans 7.1.1 as well. And in the update center you'll find um, examples uh, or samples, code samples of how to use the Glassfish embedded API. We've also added uh, library management commands, so if you need to add, uh, remove, or list libraries, you can do that. The primary use case here is, you know, in, in production environments, IT will lock down um, their uh, their uh, operating systems so that, for example, uh, the business units can't log in and install third-party libraries, perhaps, uh, you know, Spring or or uh, most importantly, JDBC um, uh, JDBC drivers. Uh, now you can do that using these library management commands. And we've also updated all of the component libraries that make up Glassfish, the third-party libraries, such as CDI and uh, Bean Validation from Red Hat, the Eclipse Link library I've mentioned, which is from, from the Eclipse Link project. Um, all those libraries have been updated. We've made quite a few quality improvements. So the core of Glassfish server itself has had over 500 uh, bug fixes. And the libraries that we include, and I mentioned them earlier, some of them, uh, those alone have had over 300 bug fixes. So this is the second bug fix release for Glassfish server. Um, and uh, you should notice uh, just overall um, you know, improved quality. We've also updated platform support. So this includes uh, you know, incremental updates to operating systems we already support, such as Mac and, and Ubuntu from a developer perspective. And uh, we've also uh, added Solaris 11 support. We've added JRocket support. So this is the first Glassfish server release, uh, 3.1 release that formally supports uh, JRocket. We've updated the JDK support as well, the uh, Hotspot JDK and uh, AIX IBM JDK support. And we've updated uh, the browsers as well, just kind of keeping up to date with what we test. We'd like to hear your feedback. Um, a lot of the features that you see in Glassfish Server 3.1.2 came through some of the communication channels that you see here, uh, whether it's Twitter, Facebook, the mailing list and the forums, uh, youtube.com slash Glassfish videos. Uh, we really try to listen to customer f uh, customers and uh, the community in, in terms of you know the features they want, the bugs they want fixed, you know we they help us prioritize uh, these features and bugs and so on. So please uh, continue the feedback. Um, we want to build a better product. and uh, thank you very much for the p feedback that you've given us so far. Thanks.